us with our, our health, not only us here, but those who will listen to the study and, and online. Um, I pray that you may help us all with our resolutions. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So our title this morning is Resolution. The word re resolution means a fixed purpose or determination of mind as a resolution to reform our lives, a resolution to undertake or, an, or a resolution to undertake an expedition. And as this is December 31st, and we know that you know, tomorrow begins a new year. Many people, it is common as custom to have a resolution. And this resolution can be a number of things. So resolution or no resolution. Despite the best of intentions, um, on, the, on the left hand side, once the glow of a fresh new year wears off, many people struggle to make good on their plans. According to a study published in the journey, Journal of Clinical Psychology, only 46% of people who made a New Year's resolution were su successful. That means over half who set their goals for the New Year will fail. This new study also involved non-resolvers, meaning those who did not make a resolution, but had only a goal that they wanted to achieve that year. And of those, only 4% of non-resolvers were successful at achieving their goals a far bleaker result than those who did make a New Year's resolution. So although not all of us will succeed, the, um, the idea of just having a resolution period actually helps us, actually gives us a better chance of having done or a better chance of achieving those goals that we set for ourselves. So New Year, New Me. This is from PTUK, December 27th, 18. Um, 94. The new year is at hand, and the time by common consent uh, sacred to the formation of new resolutions. In most cases, however, the resolutions of the previous year have the dust brushed off from them and are made to serve, a, to serve again, being just as good as new on account of never having been used. And we know that it is... It is sarcastic but custom that most people take their New Year's resolutions from the year before and recycle them into the new year. And by February, we take those resolutions, store them up in a box, and put them in the basement um, for 2024. But hopefully by the end of the study, I will have helped motivate you to achieve these resolutions. So why do we make New Year's resolutions? We tend to set these resolutions well, according to um, a psychologist, we tend to set these resolutions because the new year serves as a cyclical marker of time during which we reevaluate and take inventory of our lives. As one year closes, another one opens. And so it's natural that we will reflect back on the year that we have had, the things that we've done. It's actually very good that we do so because there we get to see where we, where we have failed and where we can improve. Scroll down with me to the page where it says the psychology of motivation. We know that there are two classes of people, the wise and the foolish. In a couple weeks time after the hype of the new year's resolution has quieted down, two classes will emerge. Just as we have the wise, we have the go-getters. And just as we have the foolish, we have the slackers. But what is it that sets these two classes apart? Both had a fixed purpose. And remember the definition for resolution means having a fixed purpose or fixed determination um, to achieve something. Both appeared, both of these classes at first appeared determined, just as both of the classes of wise and foolish at first seemed similar. Perhaps the key is in understanding what the driving force behind each is. What was the motivation and what even is motivation? Motivation is far more than a spur of the moment feeling. It's chemical, neurological, it's dopamine. And this dopamine is a neurotransmitter known as the feel good transmitter that the nervous system uses to send messages between our nerve cells. Dopamine plays a key role in how we experience pleasure. It's a big part of our unique human ability to think and plan. 
It also helps us to strive to focus, concentrate, and find things exciting. Like most other systems in the body, we often aren't aware of a problem, let alone a neurotransmitter or what they do, until there's a problem. Um, a study was conducted by Vanderbilt University where scientists um, mapped the brains of both these go-getters and these slackers, these two classes. The study showed that um, those who were willing to work hard for rewards had higher dopamine levels. The dopamine was found in the striatum and the PFC, stands for prefrontal cortex, which are both linked to motivation and reward. And you can see the image I have in page two for reference. So with the slackers, however, dopamine was only found in the interior insula. This is the section of the brain um, that deals with emotion and risk perception. And so this, say this neurotransmitter was not where, where um, we perceive a reward for something. It was not where, where um, the brain links motivation. It was more of, it was more in the section of risk of so that when it came to these resolutions, this also says that the person was, uh, was weighing the risk um, associated with it and the problems that could come in rather than this is my reward, this is what, rather than being focused on the reward ahead. So our motivation levels are related to our perceived difficulty of a task and the perceived reward that comes from completing that task. Meaning that when we see the reward as being low, motivation, the motivation to power through is naturally going to be lower. And that's why we must have, as the saying goes, eyes on the prize. But if our eyes are on the hardness of the way and the difficulties that lie, and the thorns will be caught up in them. And aside from dopamine as this neurotransmitter dealing with motivation, in the page above, we have four, we have four hormones that um, help to deal with, that encompasses all of this. So, that would be serotonin, oxytocin, dopamine, and endorphins. But for today, we're only touching dopamine. Okay, go back to the page we were before. So if, um, as we said, if the, difficult, if the perceived difficulty of a task suddenly increases when we're already low on motivation, our motivation level then drops even further. And before we know it, we're in a downward spiral. One cheat day becomes three, and days quickly become weeks and then months, and before you know it, we're dusting off last year's resolutions as if they were new. The cycle continues, that is unless we do something to override it, and only we can choose to do that. Between these notes, I've listed America's top New Year's resolutions for the past three years. And you'll see that many of them, at least the top ones, are the same ones that were recycled the previous year. And it just gives us an illustration of just how, how um, people think. And also what the common resolutions are. Now to the page of symptoms of low dopamine. Symptoms of low dopamine can be as serious as Parkinson's disease or as easily overlooked as the ones below. And these include lack of interest in activities that were once pleasurable. Now this is of course dealing with activities that were um, good for us, positive ones. Having a negative mindset, often being worried or anxious, poor digestion because neurotransmitters are actually found in our gut as well, such as serotonin. And, they, and we know that um, our brain is connected to the second brain. So naturally, our mental health would affect our digestion, would affect um, how the system works. Problems with um, the, pancre the pancreas and insulin regulation, that's also dealing with digestion. So our blood sugar levels would be more erratic. Poor circulation, depression, poor con concentration, procrastination, sleeping issues, um, appetite changes, um, poor self-image, unexplained nausea and vomiting, also associated with digestion, difficulty with pain ma management, and worst of all, suicidal thoughts. So now why resolutions fail? The following are just some of the top reasons. While more than 40% of people make New Year's resolutions, less than 10% achieve them. 
important. This is as a result of one, doing it alone, setting two, setting unattainable or unrealistic goals, not giving the goals enough time to manifest, um, related expenses, and this is also when really not really planning thoroughly our goals, um, a lack of commitment, absent or inadequate self-belief. This goes, this connects also to self-image. When you set the goals, do you believe that you can and will achieve them? Are they realistic? The cycle of making and breaking resolutions boils down to one core issue, honesty. We often set lofty goals for the future without honestly assessing why we struggled in the past, without examining where we are resisting to change. The cycle of resolve, relapse, repeat, continues year after year. So the biggest word here that I want you to take away when it comes with resolutions, I'll just write it down so we remember them. Honesty. It's great to have these high and lofty goals, but it's also better to know yourself and to understand, to understand the struggles and the, th the different thorns that are in the way. Each year that we have failed in the past is not to be a year that we beat ourselves down, but a year that we, that we know even better what Satan's devices are and where the potholes are, where, where he has thorns to, to catch our feet. So how can I write this? Honesty and would it be our pitfalls? That is the right word, yes. Our pitfalls. Mm -hmm. Next page, when we fail. Satan's work to discourage, Christ to inspire hope. Do not for a moment acknowledge Satan's temptations as being in harmony with your own mind. Turn from them as you would from the adversary himself. Satan's work is to discourage the soul. Christ's work is to inspire, is to inspire the heart with faith and hope. Satan seeks to unsettle our confidence. He tells us that our hopes are built upon false premises rather than upon the sure, immutable word of him who cannot lie. So with this, our, our work here is to build our, our hopes and our goals upon Christ. So we must have, we must come to Christ or go to Christ with these resolutions. Next quote, CH 439.4, feeling the terrible power of temptation, the drawing of desire that, the drawing of desire that leads to indulgence. Many a man cries in despair. I cannot resist evil. Tell him that he can, that he must resist. He may, he may have been overcome again and again, but it, not, but it need not always be thus. And so we may have failed in our resolutions time and time after time, but this year, but this year may be different. He is weak in moral power, controlled by the habits of a life of sin. His promises and resolutions are like ropes of sand. The knowledge of his broken promises and forfeited pledges weakens his confidence in his own sincerity and causes him to feel that God cannot accept him or work with his efforts, but he need not despair. Children may wish to do right. They may purpose in their hearts to be obedient and kind to their parents or guardians, but they need help and encouragement from them. They may make good resolutions, but unless their principles are strengthened by religion, and their lives influenced by the renewing grace of God, they will fail to come up to the mark. And this is for an encouragement for children to have resolutions as well. And that, they're, and that as parents, the parents should, um, how they can help them and encourage them in keeping those. Next quote. As you see the enormity of sin, as you see yourself as you really are, do not give up to despair. It was sinners that Christ came to save. We have not to reconcile God to us, but, O oh, wondrous love, God in, God in Christ is reconciling the world unto himself. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 19, he is wooing his tender love 
He, he is wooing by his tender love the hearts of his erring children. No earthly parent could be as patient with the faults and mistake of his children as is God with those who seeks, whom he seeks to save. A next quote. Today's need provided for. The truth of God received into the heart is able to make you wise unto salvation. And believing and obeying it, you will receive grace sufficient for the duties and trials of today. Grace for tomorrow you do not need. You should feel that you have only today, only to do with today. Overcome for today. Deny self for today. Watch and pray for today. Obtain victories in God for today. So that's another thing we could fall. We could um, write down day by day. I'm trying to write big, so. January 1st, and just to keep in mind, January 1st is not the only day we can make a promise to reform. We can each day ask for grace to reform, to restart. So, amen. Amen. So how are habits formed? First, we must, as we reflect back on um, this year, we should try to keep in mind the habits that we've formed, good or bad, and evaluate them upon the word of God and see how they were formed and how we can break them. So Romans 7, verse 15 to 25, gives us the controversy that happens in the mind when we have habits and things that we're trying, trying not to do or trying, trying to overcome. Verse um, 15 says, For that which I do allow not, for that which I do I allow not, for what I would, that do I not, but what I hate, that I do. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then it is more than I more now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. And scroll over to the to the right. Our quote says, There is over man, over every man a law which prevents him from doing the good that he knows and that he wills to do, a law which causes evil to appear in the very best efforts of men to do strictly and continually what is right. That law is as fixed as the law of the seasons or of gravitation. So that law that it is in man is fixed in a resolution is a fixed determination. So you have these two fixed things that are, con that are at controversy and warring with one another. What we would want to do, what you want to do, and what your habits, what you keep doing. As, as Paul says, that which I do, I allow not for what I would, that I do not. Continuing in same quote. And it holds, and it will hold every man in bondage of an everlasting and wretched captivity, unless he will be delivered by him who is above that law, that is by Jesus Christ. So only Christ can break us from this continuous cycle of recycling resolutions, of setting goals and not attaining them. Only Christ can give us the power in order to, to achieve them. Jesus Christ has scrolled down with me to profess philosophers. Profess philosophers, eminent teachers, and would-be saviors in large numbers have set forth systems of morality and rules of life, but they do not only fail but they not only failed to bestow the power to perform, but they themselves failed to perform the duties which they enjoined. The excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ, the Lord, in, is in that he not only set forth the grandest system of right known to universe, but he imparts the power to perform it. So in order to form these good habits, we must first place ourselves where the Lord can bless us. By taking care of the little things, this things taking each day one at a time, little by little. By taking care of the little things, we make room for the big things, thereby increasing our opportunity to fulfill them. And you had a verse that. Um, it wasn't a verse. It was oh. a quote. Ellen White says, speaking about the, uh, the habits of the man of sin, it says, little by little and at first by self. And in the same way with um, with the whole 
first. I want to start with little by little, and almost imperceptibly to the human heart. But with the slow wooing that the Holy Spirit does until it can grow within, within the heart. Mm-hmm. Yes. Amen. Amen. So habits are formed with consistency. When we are expecting a reward greater than ourselves, it will arouse us from our slumber, our perpetual or our perpetual state of disillusion. Dopamine is released when your brain is expecting a reward. Satan wants us to believe that there is no reward or that that reward is beyond our reach. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. So as we read this, what is our expected end? What is the reward that we see? Can you... Amen. It was a question for yourself. Oh, that's Yes. So we must ask ourselves, what is our expected end? or when, when setting our goals and our resolutions. Can you see your reward ahead or has the hardness of the way blinded you? Yeah. Um, that's why in her dream, she, she saw the light, the light behind them and it lit up the whole path onto the end. So Christ always shows us the end because, because if we don't see the end, we'll ask what is the reason for all this in the first place because, because you have you have no goal if you don't see see the end of it. Mm. Amen. And I'm just adding here from what we had read previously that only Christ can help us to break the bad cycles or our bad habits. Our next page, as we draw to a close. So as I, I said before that these When we are expecting a reward greater than ourselves, it is that that will arouse us from our slumber, our dissolution. And so in speaking of slumber, um, bringing back the, the two classes with the wise virgins. So what arose, what arose the virgins from their slumber? We know that it was a cry. And this cry was at midnight. And evidently the, at midnight is the beginning of the new year for us. And so we'll see with their, in their example, the their fixed determination or their resolution. Angels were sent to the humble devoted ones and constrained them to raise the cry. Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Those entrusted with the cry made haste and in the power of the Holy Spirit sounded the message and aroused their discouraged brethren. And so these, those, who, um, those who were the go-getters, as we saw before, they... In the power of the Holy Spirit, they sounded in, in the power of the Holy Spirit, they sounded the message and they aroused their, their discouraged brethren. So they went forward. They went forward seeing they went forward with their resolutions. And um, these discouraged brethren were the ones who let go of their resolutions. This work did not stand in the wisdom and learning of men, but in the power of God. And, in his saint, and his saints who heard the cry could not resist it. The most spiritual received this message first, and those who had formerly led, formerly led in the work were the last to receive and help swell the cry. Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. And our next quote, those who, those who put their trust in Christ are not to be enslaved by any hereditary or cultivated habits or tendencies. Instead of being held in bondage to the lower nature, they are to rule every appetite and passion. God has not left us to battle with evil in our own um, finite strength. Whatever may be our inherited or cultivated tendencies to do wrong, we can overcome them through the power that he is ready to impart. Through the right exercise of the will, an entire change may be made in the life. By yielding up the will to Christ, we are to ally ourselves with divine power. We receive strength from above to hold us steadfast, a pure and noble life, a life of victory over appetite and lust. 
and I like that it says this because if you've, if you've been paying attention to the resolutions before, some people's resolutions are to eat healthier, um, to exercise more, join a gym, lose weight, etc. And so it adds, it adds all, of, all of that in there. We receive strength from above to hold us steadfast, a pure and noble life, a victory over appetite and lust. It is possible to everyone who will unite his weak, wavering human, human will to the omnipotent, unwavering will of God. And so another in our resolutions, we must consult the will of God for our lives. And in closing now, the old year, the old year is past and the new year is before us. Day by day, the record will go up to God. What, hi what history shall I make? Oh, that it may be such a record as I shall not be ashamed to meet in the judgment. I want to have Jesus with me every hour. Let us strive to have a better record for the coming year and live so near to God that you may be surrounded with the atmosphere of heaven and thus be a representative of Christ. And I leave you with some more stats and things to see and at the end, some interesting and motivating quotes about the, the upcoming year. Let us close with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time we've had to go over our health portion. I pray that you may please help us as we look into our mental health, that we may understand our, our that we may reflect back on the year, that we may reflect on, on the areas where we could have improved, where we have failed, the many pitfalls that, that, that Satan has put in the way that has brought us down, even the pitfalls that we have set ourselves. I pray that you may help us not to dwell on the mistakes of the past year, but that we may, that we may see those mistakes as opportunities and, and that we may use them to, that you may help us to use them to map out a better way a better route so that we may be, so that at the end we may reach you and that we may be with you in heaven. Forgive us of our sins and please help us with our resolutions. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.